crazy mechanic, one big family, one big sisterhood. And we love our hands to be dirty, our fingers to be dirty. We are together and we are fixing cars around the world. All right, make sure you do your, you have your homework done. Yes. I need to see the papers. All right, then good luck. My name is Sandra Agwebo. I'm the first female mechanic in Nigeria and the founder of the Lady Mechanic Initiative. I've been a mechanic for 32 years and I've been running my own garage for 22 years now. So that is the way it works. The Lady Mechanic Initiative is working with the vulnerable group. The ex commercial sex workers, the school dropouts, married women who want to acquire skill. They are like, there's no more hope in my life. I said to them, you know what? You have got a lot of hope. I'm going to help you build that hope. I'm in her year. She has five children and she's a mechanic. Amazing. Because they are vulnerables, they don't have money. They are from poor background. So they don't pay to learn. And we do all this. From the funders, funders pay their stipend, pay for their lecture, overall, and my training is just free of charge. You want to be able to help other women as well. Now we've been able to empower graduated by 1,000 female mechanics in Nigeria in five states. Being the first female mechanic in Nigeria is not a bed of roses. Men have been there from generation to generation fixing cars. When I came in, it was like, excuse me, are you okay? Or you need to see a doctor. But no, I knew what I was doing. But for me to become the first female mechanic in Nigeria, I had to work five times harder than the way the men will work to prove myself. Many of you, they don't know me by my name. It's lady mechanic everywhere I go. Now, a lot of guests want to come to Nigeria to learn how to fix cars. Is the best job in the world for any woman I say. I'm Eric Mason, I'm a mother, and I'm a transgender guy. Corey is my 15-year-old transgender daughter. I started transitioning almost two years ago, and Corey started transitioning almost five years ago. I've always known that I was different. I've always known that I'm not the normal boy. I was never like happy, I was always negative. And when I first put on some makeup, I was like, wow. My family is made up of me, my husband, and my five children. I waited um, until Corey was completely through her transition before I, I came out myself. It was really hard keeping that secret from my family, especially from my husband. But at the time, I just knew I had to focus on my child. I've been bullied since fifth grade, and. Still getting bullied sometimes. One kid said I should go and kill myself because that I was different. I'm sorry. When my mom came out, I was like, I'm not alone anymore. We can actually understand what we're going through with each other. We can, you know, talk to each other for having a bad day. Me supporting Corey is, in my opinion, what you're supposed to do as a parent. You're supposed to support your children no matter what. So I don't feel like I did anything special. I didn't. I just love my kid. I love my kid no matter what she looks like, no matter who she wants to be. We are stronger as a family. I think anytime you are living your authentic self and you are living your truth, um, it makes you a better person overall. It makes you a better parent. It makes you a better spouse. My family is everything. We fight, we laugh, we cry. We're a typical family. We just look a little different. That's it. It's all it boils down to.
My mom is an amazing person. Janet is very alegre, muy cariñosa. Jeanette Castagnon and Rosario Vargas are a mother and daughter separated by a border. One living in San Diego and the other in Mexico. I came from Mexico 2006 because I want to get another opportunity for my kids. Cuando se fue no en sí no me despedí de ella. Pensé que Iba a ser breve el que la volviera a ver. I don't have the permission to cross the border, the line. From the last year and a half, I see my mom to the fence. At the site of a binational park in San Diego, the U.S. Border Patrol allows families to meet. On the weekends, loved ones enter the park and walk directly up to the border, a steel fence. This gives families on both sides a rare opportunity to see and speak to each other. Lo veo el cerco, aparte de que me da tristeza, me da alegría porque voy a ver a mi hija. You know, you're gonna see your mom, you're gonna see your family, but the fence only have a tiny holes. And my mom sometimes put the finger in the tiny hole. I just a little touch it, just touch it. Or sometimes I give you a kiss. Está muy cerca y a la vez tan lejos. Pero me he puesto tan mal la hija, quién sabe. Ma, no pienses así, ma, por favor. Como siempre te digo, ma, te quiero mucho, ma. On April 30th, for the third time ever, authorities agree to open the door, allowing select families a brief moment to embrace. Each of them will only have three minutes. Voy a estar, no sé cómo me vaya a sentir el, al momento de que la pueda abrazar, de que pueda estar junto a ella. Right now, I feel so happy because I'm waiting. I'm waiting so much this moment. Ever, we have the opportunity to have this door open. I feel <sighs> incredible. She was so happy. She was so sweet with me. She told me, I love you, mommy. I love you so much. I love you, I love you. This is not a landfill. This was Versva Beach in Mumbai, India, a little over three years ago. It was covered in over 6,000 tons of trash. After what the United Nations called the world's largest beach cleanup, this is Versva Beach today. It was a movement started and led by one man, Afroz Shah. My name is Afro Shah, I'm a lawyer by profession, and I love oceans. In October of 2015, Versava Beach was little more than a dumping ground on the west coast of Mumbai. There were five and a half feet of plastic, and when you see so much plastic juxtaposed to the ocean, it's scary, it's very scary. We have devastated the health of our ocean. Garbage pile up either on land or in ocean is a big issue, not only in India, world over. So Afros took matters into his own hands. He started picking up the trash himself. I have spent uh, my childhood here, you know, I used to play here, and the beach used to be very, very clean. For me, it was purely simple. It had to be my personal journey. Then I told myself it would be difficult for a single man to do it, so I said, why not take this personal journey to others? I provoked others to join in, and eventually they did join in. 
Since 2015, every weekend, hundreds of volunteers join Afros to pick up the trash that has been strewn along a two-mile stretch of the beach. And the volunteer work continues today. We have been cleaning for past 112 weeks now, and it's almost uh, 9 million kgs of plastic and filth out from the ocean. Beach cleaning is one of the biggest preventive action to prevent these plastic going into the deep sea. This is minimum we can do. Through the use of trucks, bulldozers, buckets, whatever people can use, the beach has slowly been picked up. But the issue is more than just the beach. It's about the mindset of people. So, apart from the beach cleanup, Afros also works with local communities to help educate them on recycling and proper trash disposal. We go to coastal communities where, you know, the littering happens, talking to them. I go to people's garbage. I tell them, show me. Then I tell them how to segregate, how to handle plastic. This is the first creek which is entering into the ocean from here. I'm proud that I'm connecting with people and I'm connecting with nature. That gets a very big sense of pride in my heart, you know. This problem of pollution is created by us. We have lost a sense of belonging to the, our planet and to our ocean. A lot of people ask me, Afros, how long are you going to clean? The day we say that this ocean is mine and it has to be spick and span, we will not ask this question. In fact, we will go and provoke others to do what I am doing. We are in for a long haul and every citizen on this planet must be in for a long haul. Start doing your bit what we are doing. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Ketika kita bicara di bubble, untuk akses transportasi umum sangat sulit sekali. Karena saya juga seorang difabel, sehingga saya ingin memberikan sesuatu ke teman-teman dari masalah yang kita hadapi tentang transportasi. Uh, nama saya Triono, sebagai founder sekaligus CEO di Divacity Tour and Transport. Kita uniknya satu pelakunya difabel semua, gitu kan? Dan kita prioritas pelayanan juga terhadap teman-teman difabel. Mungkin kalau dihitung kita sudah mengantarkan dari 2015 ke 2017 ribuan orang yang berkebutuhan khusus yang berhasil kita mobilisasi. Bahkan teman-teman yang istilahnya di pelosok-pelosok pun bisa kita mobilisasi. Identifikasi penumpangnya nomor satu dulu, waktu, tempat, dan kebutuhan yang harus kita sediakan. Kita motor ada dua jenis ya, yang satu single seat hanya untuk tempat duduk, yang satu lagi untuk wheelchair, untuk kursi roda. Sebelum kita diva ini berjalan, mereka tidak bisa bergerak, akhirnya depresi. Dulu kita hanya berpikir sederhana bisa nganter mereka kemana gitu, terus pulang lagi. Kita nggak pernah membayangkan akan impactnya sebesar ini, jadi panggilan yang luar biasa bagi kami. Mi nombre es Renata Flores, tengo 16 años, soy cantante y estoy tratando de preservar el idioma quechua. El quechua es un idioma de nuestros antepasados, los incas, y también es nuestra cultura. Y este idioma ahora se está perdiendo en el Perú. La gente eh, lo ve el, al quechua como al símbolo de, de pobreza o de discriminación. Si se pierde el quechua, también estaría propenso de, a desaparecer del Perú. Yo comencé cantando canciones eh, modernas en quechua, mayormente para los jóvenes puedan escucharlo, puedan eh, gustarles ¿no? y aprender el quechua. Las canciones que hemos traducido en quechua eh, fue el de Michael Jackson, el de Alicia Keys. 
la canción de Michael Jackson, The Way You Make Me Feel, tuvo más de un millón de visitas. Y fue como que, ay, no lo puedo creer. <risa> Estoy viendo cambios eh, al, al modo de, de pensar en este, este idioma, de parte de los jóvenes. Me gustaría eh, enseñar a las personas y seguir con este proyecto del quechua.